has been a minute since I have talked to you guys. And let me just say that I have been on and have a very healthy kick. Um, I have increased my exercising and um, I am just truly focused in 2024. Um, this is my year of getting my healthy back. Not that I was unhealthy um, before, but I'm just really, just really focusing on getting everything on track as far as my weight, getting um, mentally, physically, just healthy. And um, so I, it's not that I took some time away from you guys, um, but I don't know if you guys listened to a few of my last videos. Um, the last one that I did was a Timu, um, a Timu um, overhaul where I had gotten a lot of things from Timu, some great little finds that I got from there. Um, but my um, handbag purchases this year have been very extravagant. And that's why I have not been purchasing as much as I did last year. Um, Cause last year, I think I kind of went over budget a little bit last year on my handbag purchases. So I'm kind of not spending as much as I did um, this time last year. I had, it's May now. And this time last year, I think I may have had almost double of the newer bags than I have May of this year. And I'm proud of myself because the purchases that I have made this year are purchases that um, are really um, items that I wanted to have in my actual um, handbag collection. That was not just um, impulse shopping and having buyer's remorse after the time um, to return it back to Fashion file or rehab, rebag.com or the real real um, has passed, um, and um, and having to try to sell them to just the average person and giving them a deal with it. So I have not done a lot of impulse buying, um, but I did have a credit um, on, and the latest bag that I'm carrying is the bag with this, the the bag that I'm actually carrying now is the bag that I'm featuring that I have not featured with you guys um, yet. Um, and I'm just super, super excited. Um, I had a credit on um, the Real Real um, of, of a watch that I had um, purchased and I really liked the watch. It was really, really nice. Um, but I didn't like the way some it was something my my skin is super super sensitive and i didn't like the way the band was um leaving like it was just really weird um and i thought about um giving it like to my mom for mother's day or my mother-in-law for mother's day um but my husband caught wind of how much it actually was and we got two um blessed moms that are still with us and he decided no you need to send that back get a refund get something else um so when i sent it back at that current time on the real real it wasn't really um a lot of things on there that i wanted that hit me in the face but i kept looking i kept looking and it was a bag that i wasn't really sure of because i never really seen it in person. I never knew anybody that actually had it. It came out in the early um, 2008. And it was a um, um, a hobo style bag. And it was made um, from the Marc Jacobs series when Marc Jacobs was the designer for Louis Vuitton. He was um, the designer for Louis Vuitton for decades. And then everyone knows who Marc Jacobs is. He has his own handbag collection now and different um, clothing items and all that kind of stuff. Marc Jacobs um, was the designer for Louis Vuitton for a while. And he created some very, very beautiful um, pieces for Louis Vuitton, the luxury house. And um, this is one bag that, again, I've never seen in person. Um, I never even knew it existed. Because um, what my whole thing is, 
I'm I'm trying to get the older older bags, the ones where the attention to detail, where the gold was still brass, where um just the shadow was where it needed to be. Um, if you've noticed, a lot of the bags have been not really um, covered with the vachetta, with the monogram. They put in like very little bit of vachetta on the bags. And I think the two go together um, with the monogram canvas bag. The vachetta sets it off. Um, they did make a great comeback with one bag, and I plan to invest in that eventually. Um, not right now, because it's a little steep in price, and, and I'll, um, I'll share with you guys once it enters my home, but it's going to be a while before I actually get it, um, because again, this is not impulse buying year. This is saving. We got a lot of things that we're trying to do, and I'm just trying to make some um, smart purchases instead of just purchasing just because. So this one I came across. Um, just to, I didn't want the credit just to sit there because if it just sits there. I'll eventually just get something that I really don't want, but I'll get it because I don't want the credit just sitting on that account, not using it. So I came across it and I, I looked it over. I looked on the inside. Um, on, you can look all, you can look at every inch of it, um, before you commit to it. Um, and then once you have it, is yours right so when i got it um the only thing that i was concerned about is if it had a smell because it was um this is a 2010 bag um so it's over 14 years old and i was like oh my god i bet this has been sitting up somewhere and just not smelling just wrong or whatever and it was not you guys it is immaculate it is what a Louis Vuitton luxury handbag um, collector who likes the Vachetta and monogram together. This is the look of the bag that you want. <laughs> it is the look that every um, um, handbag collector wants when it comes to Louis Vuitton. It is the desire. This beauty. It is the Stressa, uh, the LV Stressa um, GM um designed by mark jacobs um this is a 2010 bag um it came out in the the actual style of this bag came out in 20 um 2008 this is this is a 2010 um everything about this is exquisite this is when louis vuitton's um green um back in the in the undertone of the canvas was still alive and well what you guys are still looking for in the canvas, which they don't, it's not in the canvas anymore. The canvas is now brown in tone, but this is the decades of when the green was the undertone. And it's just an exquisite bat. Look at it. It is immaculate. It is immaculate. Everything about it. Look at the patina on there. And I put, I put it next to my Artsy um, yesterday. And my Artsy, even though it's got a layer of patina on it now, just a thin layer, it looked like it stopped white when you compare it to this. But this is a 14-year-old bag, though. And it is perfect, guys. Look at the piping. And I'm going to show you the guys the inside, too. The, look at the piping on it. Perfect. The only thing that, um, and I'm, I'm thinking about it because this is brass. I'm thinking about getting some brass cleaner. Um, my husband said some black brass cleaner should actually clean it up. But just from the wear and tear of this part, it, I don't know if it's even going to pick it up on here. I want to try to smooth that out. But this is perfect. It has been well this is perfect. It has been well kept. Um, look at this. This bag is 14 years old. And look at it. There's no scratches. Now, the corners, that's what I forgot to do. And I'm going to have to do it with my um, leather conditioner. I forgot to do that. Um, the corners are, you can tell the corners are worn. 
on both sides. See? So I had to put some conditioner, leather conditioner on the sides of it because it kind of warm, but the leather conditioner will um, clean that up. Um, and let me just show you. Louis Vuitton does not um, sell or recommend leather conditioner or leather cleaner. Um, they believe in allowing your bag to age um, and just taking care of it, like not having, protecting your, um, any bag that has a shed of leather on it from inclement weather, being having it out in the rain or anything like that. But other than that, they do not sell like cleaning products or anything for their bags. So we've had to improvise as consumers and um, make our own, um, find out what actually works. Um, like the Apple Guard to protect the um, pachetta and this is a part of the Apple Guard family, the um, leather cleaner. I did, I cleaned it. And, and it, this, it really wasn't, it really didn't need cleaning but it always needs conditioning when I, when when you get a bag this this age um condition putting leather conditioner on there will never hurt it um you just don't want to over um do it just a little bit all it is all it needs it doesn't really require that much on um on here um you just want to make sure that it's not dry that the leather on the on the bag is not dry and being the, the type of um, handbag that this is, it won't dry rot like that unless you have it in um, stored in like a dry attic um, area um, where it's not getting um, any air or anything like a stuffy place. That would be the only um, situation where the leather may dry rot. Um, and... It's no coming back from that. You would either, you would have to either get it replaced by Louis Vuitton or you would have to find like a local um, cobbler that can replace that leather on that bag because it's done. If your bag ever gets dry rotted, it's, it's a wrap. There's nothing you can do to fix that. So they do recommend that you keep your bag stored um, in, um, in, a, in, a, in a temp this is not too warm. And contrary to what, because you're going to hear some people on YouTube say, don't leave your bags in your dust bag. But that's incorrect. Um, the the dust bags are for, for people who want to store their bags. Um, you don't necessarily have to store your bag. But just say if you want to keep your bag in a dust bag, nothing should happen to your bag unless you... Um, have it in a dust bag you never take it out and you go like somewhere where it's very humid humid away it's very humid like maybe florida or somewhere it gets humid here but not as bad as florida and places like that and you stuff it up in your closet there in a in a place where it's very humid then your your bag is done for uh, <laughs> but other than that leaving it in this dust bag is your truly your choice um so i do not i don't store mine in a dust bag i keep most of mine in my personal own closet just for protection of them and i do from time to time i do look them over and see if anything um needs like some loving tender loving care um on this bag i can tell you what i've used when i received it now, just to give you clarity, I did not, this chain did not come with this. This is from another handbag. Um, but what I did when I purchased it, um, I, the first thing that I did is I used non-scented, remember, non-scented baby wipes. And I just wiped it down. Just I just wiped it down, completely down. Because this has been somebody's bag for 14 years, right? Um, so I wiped it down with baby wipes. And then after I let it dry and all that kind of stuff, I went ahead and I conditioned um, the vachetta and I, um, I'm sorry, I cleaned the leather, uh, the vachetta, and then I conditioned it. Um, and it, it wasn't really a lot, didn't, it wasn't like this bag was dirty. So let me just be clear. It wasn't like when I cleaned it 
with the leather cleaner that I was like wiping off dirt off of it. It wasn't that type of um, situation at all. Um, it really wasn't. So um, you've seen the outside. And she, this bag, I, I'm, I'm just in awe of it, guys. This is the reason why people are going back and getting um, the um, older um, bags. Because this is a classic bag. And I didn't, I thought I knew all the hobos that were out that Louis Vuitton has created over the years. But apparently I don't. <laughs> because every just when I think that I've covered the hobo section, um, I didn't. I can't get all of them because some of them are pretty much like the same bag, like the reverse, um, softy and the sully and the um berry. All of those are pretty much the exact same bag. Um, only difference is one is reverse monogram and one uh, the other one is monogram, but they're pretty much the same bag. The inside is pure perfection look how clean that is guys look how clean that is no nicks no pin marks no oil marks like from lotions or anything like that it has a d-ring um right here and i got my keys hanging on it perfect spot for a d-ring it has two pockets two pockets right here let me see if I can adjust that's better okay now okay okay I, it's a d-ring right here right right here two pockets and let me give you a little fun fact um Louis Vuitton or any um, handbag manufacturer that's in tune to the times that uh, that bag is being created. What they try to do is they try to complement the bag based on um, what a woman will use those pockets for in their bag, right? So most people like myself, especially a bag that's designed like this, would drop their, hand, their phone inside the pockets of the bag. So what um, Louis Vuitton, Dooney and Burke, um, Gucci, YSL, just about all of the the luxury houses that are out there um, or handbag manufacturers out there um, do it. They make their pocket size inside their bags based on the sizes of the most popular cell phones. And they're catering mostly to the iPhone and Samsung phones. So the pocket in here will vary um, um, on bags based on the time frame that that bag is made um, and what type of, what size are the phones. So like in the early 2000 handbags from Louis Vuitton, you're probably gonna find that the pockets are really kind of small, um, just depending on what year um, that bag was created. These are nice size pockets. I can fit my phone in there and my, I have an iPhone for work and it fits nicely in there. Um, so it, it's a perfect size. I have, this is one of the rare bags that I have, I don't have a con for. Um, it's pretty much like how I don't have a con for my graceful I really don't have a car, um, a con, um, well, I, I do kind of have a con for my Never Fool, um, let me think, let me think, let me think. All the other, um, bags I do, other than the Sully, because the Sully could have been the bag, my bag of the hobo bag of the year. I, I, the Sully is a perfect hobo bag. It's, not, it's, it's, it's simple, it doesn't have anything extra, it just is what it is, it's a hobo bag. And that's one reason why I love the Graceful so much, because it's simple, it's not a lot to it, but it's just an elegant um, luxury handbag. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, it doesn't have a lot of a shutter on it, which does not bother me either way. 
Um, it's just here I am. This is this is it. Um, the no way I don't have any cons to it. A lot of people thought I would have cons, like why does it um why does it have so much vachetta? No, that's one that's one thing I love about it is the vachetta. That's one thing I love about it. Um but everything, the mechanism of this bag, it kind of reminds me when I really look at this, it kind of reminds me of the Florentine by Dunienberg. And I think I'm going to do a comparison between these two because the more I look at it and the more that this is slouched down, it reminds me of my my beautiful Florentine um, bag. My husband got for Valentine's Day for me last year. I have it in the natural and it has patina beautiful, y'all. It is so beautiful. But it's it, this is giving me Dunian and Burke Florentine. It really is. Um, and if it is similar, um, it's not the first time that Louis Vuitton and Dunenberg has had a clash with um, designs. Um, it's not the first time that it has happened. Um, but, and I digress. Um, but I, I, I do, I think I really do want to do a, a, a little comparison between the two because they're not like identical because it's like an obvious difference between them, but there, there's some deep similarities to these, um, that's just standing out to me. But this is when you have achieved perfection. When, whenever a bag gets to this layer of patina, it only gets better from here. This is the look that people want when it comes to a Louis Vuitton bag. You you want that, you want to keep it from inclement weather as long as you can when you first purchase your very new um, Louis Vuitton bag. But after the time has passed and the oils have set in, the vitamin, the um, natural um, sunlight has kicked in and the patina process has been, is being done with the bag, at the end of the day, Everybody cannot wait to this beautiful caramel patina look of this bag. This is why you know how you know that whomever was in the room in the 1800s when they designed the first Louis Vuitton bag with the monogram and Vachetta, they knew that they were creating a masterpiece. And they knew that eventually one day it would get to this look. This is what you call beauty and perfection. This is, this is, this is what you call perfection. It is the LV Stressa GM designed by Marc Jacobs, um, a, a timepiece, a, a beautiful timepiece, very exquisite. And I'm very happy with it. So I'm gonna sum up this video. I wanna thank you for subscribing to my video. I wanna thank you for listening to my video and commenting. I love all comments. I try my best to get back to your comments um, and just to acknowledge that I see your comment. Um, so thank you so much for being a part of my, um, my luxury handbag journey. And I promise to bring you more content soon, but thank you so much for your support. And if you haven't subscribed and you're just listening, Hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I promise you won't regret joining my um, joining my blog. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend. Bye.